tell me where to go. 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 Tell me a gym in downtown Hampton focused on empowering women to become the best version of themselves. And my name is Desiree Mills. I am an owner of A Lending Ear. You can also call, call me Cosmic Gray if you're feeling kind of funky. And I help women to understand their worth and to move past any limitations. The purpose of this podcast is to inspire women to be bold about their intentions and to take massive action in all areas of their life. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about a growth mindset and how to develop one in business. Yeah, so uh, especially when you start to dive into business, you're you're gonna face a lot of challenges, especially about how you need to structure your mind because the previous ways that you've been thinking with your mind, with your mind, you cannot go into that when you're starting a business because a lot of different ways that you have thought or we have thought was definitely a hindrance, and I think we could have stopped a lot of different kind of frustrations mm -hmm. if we would have came into it with a different mindset. Um, so the first step you ref you definitely want to do is accepting exactly where you want to be in your business um, ventures and claim it. A lot of people are even just struggle with saying like, hey, yeah, I want to be a business owner. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be an employee or um, let's say you have a, a great business idea. You're like, hey, I want to do X, Y and Z or whatever it could be being okay with accepting it and there so i think some people don't always want to accept um a certain things about themselves because it also requires a certain amount of action and change that has to go behind it and then also if they even feel worthy enough to even want to have that in their lives um some people can deal with i know even for myself having that sense of lack of value mm -hmm. and what i have to offer um as a person and definitely um in business as well so to even to be able to write out you know hey i i want to be a business owner mm -hmm. and being okay with it it was a struggle for me it's like I, I don't know why, well, I, I started to develop to understand why, but at that very moment, I didn't really understand why I couldn't say that, why it was so hard for me to say, hey, it's okay for me to be great. Because I think, mm -hmm. especially with starting a business, and um, if you were previously an employee or working for someone else, you know, um, that's all you ever really knew. You Your parents grew up, uh, worked for someone else, your family, your friends, and you know, you still want to also make sure that you're able to have a, a good amount of income mm -hmm. is well so taking that that step of saying and writing it down and accepting and claiming it it brings you into this whole other world that you're not really familiar with and it can be really scary but I really believe that's the first thing because once you accept it then you can start to put those plans of action um, behind it um, right and if you won't claim what you want mm -hmm. you can't take any steps towards it right so you have to really be bold about your intentions and the things that you want and go ahead and just claim it before you can even start on this journey. Right, because it's, it's you you automatically are starting to set that intention. You're automatically saying, all right, this is what I want. And I, I really, truly believe in intention and visualizations. Mm -hmm. And I think once you make that, you accept that in your mind and also in your heart, you know, the world will start to open up. It will start to bend around you having that... Um, having that that desire for it um so once i know for me once i actually started accepting and claim um a, a, a little background about it you know i i was a pharmacy technician when i um uh, was younger i went to school for it. i got my certification in virginia um i worked as a pharmacy technician um in indiana and illinois so i was like oh yeah i want to be a pharmacy tech and everything that'll be fine you know i was making a decent enough money and whatnot um but then uh after i had my daughter and i realized how much one how much daycare would cost <laughs> more than your salary more than my salary <laughs> i was like it to me it's like pretty much if i put her in daycare to continue working I it pretty much, pointless. it was pretty much, I would have nothing left over. It was, I was pretty much paying someone to watch my daughter, but not getting any kind of residual income for myself. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I don't want to do that. And I, I enjoy spending time with her and everything. So I set in my mind 
from the jump, I want to be able to stay at home with my daughter and have some kind of income. That was my intention. And from there, you know, I started to think of different um, different things I wanted to do. I was starting making tutus at first. I didn't. I'm, I'm a starter, and I, I gave up a, a lot on myself. But she made one for my daughter. I made one for <laughs> Susan's daughter. Oh yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. It was the purple. I was looking through my pictures the other day. It oh was yeah, with the head, with the, th- with the headband yeah. too, and it was sunflowers because Susan's favorite. Uh, I still have it. You do? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because Susan's favorite uh, flower is uh, sunflowers and everything. <laughs> so I made it for her. So I tried that. Um, I'm really into stones and crystals and everything. I, I was wire wrapping and everything that didn't go so well um what was another thing I was doing it was something else I was doing I I can't remember it was so many different things but I knew in my heart I accepted the fact that I wanted to be to have my own business to be able to take care of my daughter so once I accepted that even though a lot of different things I initially started that may not have finished I didn't stop and that ultimately brought me here working with Susan at Brother Bite 757 and also creating my own business my own company a lending ear as well um so that really truly is one of the number one steps and behind that also knowing that you're worthy of it mm-hmm. um I definitely, like I said before, I didn't feel like I had much value. I felt like I know I innately am this person who mm-hmm. is people feel comfort comfortable talking with me, um, letting their hair down and everything. But I didn't, since I've had it my whole life, it's kind of like. You didn't see the value in it. Didn't see the value in it. It's kind of like, okay, I, I do this. That's, you know, what and else? And another point is you mm-hmm. can't let your circumstances determine your worth. Right. So many people think because they came from some place, well, I can't get out of here, or my family never left here, and it has nothing to do with oh, you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, in this day and age, it's so easy to find a way to, to make money, to find an opportunity mm-hmm. if you ask and you seek. But first, you just have to make that intention and say, this is what I want to do. But again, you can't just you can't let these ideas of who you are hold you back. Because right. that, that right there will stop you in your tracks. If you think that you can only be an employee or you can only be a pharmacy tech, oh, I you don't, can only be an assistant to I whatever business have, your family has. Right, or I don't have a degree in that aspect right. of it, too. That was my big thing. Mm-hmm. I'm a first-generation college student. <laughs> my mom works at Target. I love her to death. And But there's so many things about her mindset that would never allow her to be an entrepreneur. Right, And I could have taken those character traits and I could have looked at her and been like, oh, well, I have to keep working. I have to keep grinding. Don't get me wrong. She's a hard worker. Mm-hmm. She Like everything she has, she worked for. But I don't want to be in that situation where I'm exchanging my time for money mm-hmm. and not living in my purpose. So I knew that I wanted something more for myself. Right. And it's kind of seeing her go through that is what made me decide that I didn't want that. Right. And I didn't want to to feel the way that I felt watching her struggle. I wouldn't mm-hmm. want London to, to feel like that. Right. You know, I had so many... I was an athlete like my whole life, but my mom worked overnight because there were five of us and she wanted to be there for us like during the day, but she was so tired. She couldn't come to like my, my games, any of my events, things like that. And I remember one time I left my shoes um, at for a track meet and my mom, she came, she brought them and she left and I was just like, you can't watch my event. Mm. But she was so tired and she had to work that night. So you have to accept where you are in your circumstances but you can't let that define you and use it to propel you forward into what you really want to be right and i think deciding who you're not is just as important as deciding who you want to be right and i think you know like susan using that example with her mother knowing like hey i don't want that for myself and i don't want that for my daughter and i i I definitely can relate that relate to that as well um you know in my family we we come from a line of women who have been hurt and abused and everything um and i i struggle with that internally one trying to make sure i created a safe environment for my daughter and that honestly boggled on my mind a lot even kind of had this kind of um difficulty difficulty between me and my husband because i i kept thinking of like the the where who i'm from what lineage i came from and everything and i also tapped into my value system i mean my grandmother um they they didn't come up with a lot of money um some of them went to school they didn't always finish it or they kind of just fell back into being an employee and everything like that so looking at where they are and how they operate in life i'm like i don't want to i really mainly didn't want that for my children i Mm. i upset in my mind i told myself like i wanted it to end with me 
And when I said, okay, I wanted to end with me, the next thing that came to mind was, okay, well, then how do you do that? Mm -hmm. How do you end it with me? How do you end it with yourself? And more importantly, how can you, what tools, what teaching, what wisdom can you pass on to your children so they wouldn't have to go through that? And Um, that actually brings us to our next point is, you have to have a growth mindset when you yeah. want to mm-hmm. when you take any kind of step in business when you want to expand when you want to start your own business you have to understand you have to accept your weaknesses know where your strengths are right. but know where you are weak mm-hmm. and then find the tools to help you advance and to accelerate mm-hmm. in that area um one thing that i'm a big proponent of is seeking mentorship mm-hmm. um we kind of touched on touched on in the last episode but so many women especially are afraid to to seek mentorship and to ask for help but it's the quickest way to get you from point a to point b without yeah. all the struggle yes why waste 10 years of your life trying to figure out marketing or advertising or whatever area you're struggling with when you can just go to someone who's already an expert mm-hmm. pay them for their time mm-hmm. and in in three months instead of taking the 10 years it took them to get that knowledge right. you're able to apply that information right so you have to be willing to to invest. grow and invest. invest in yourself yes people don't really and recognize know that. that you have to change from the inside out mm-hmm. you have to change your mindset and, and really the way that you perceive other people and and knowledge itself right right and so like she said you know seeking that help that you need because you don't know everything and accepting that you don't know everything that there's mm-hmm. no you don't have to feel bad about it you don't or don't use that as an excuse like okay well i don't know this so since i don't know it i'm just going to give up right there because or thinking that because you're mm-hmm. supposed to be an expert in one area you can't ask someone for advice right. or mentorship in that area knowledge is ever expanding ever growing ever evolving right so even if you know you can read a textbook front to back about mm-hmm. whatever subject in a month from now we'll discover something new right and there's always a different way to look at that information to apply to a different situation so having another person who's already gone through it, who's read more than you who's experienced more than you is a better way to, to get through that and to be able to apply that information back to yourself without all that struggle right you don't have to and then help and apply it to yourself you know take away from it exactly that exactly what you need from it and be able to put that action behind it you know especially I, I think the great thing about mentorship because like you say you can read the book you can gain so much knowledge but I think having somebody there to keep you accountable that who can check in with you who can see or you can continuously go to and ask questions helps you put that action because mm-hmm. if you if you're doing it on your own you kind of like oh i'll do it the next day i'll do it right. that way especially and if that your best goes friend. into knowing what your weaknesses are yes yeah, so if you know that you're a holding procrastinator you mm-hmm. if you know that you're a person you're not going to read this book front to back then you know you need to invest in a coach yeah or and you may be the opposite where you know that having someone yell at you or to keep you on track is just going to make you more anxious but you can sit there and read a book and go at your own pace mm-hmm. well then buy that course that's i online. need a coach mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm definitely and in and, and i I had it it took me a minute to accept that Mm -hmm. and also be okay with it because sometimes people will tell you like oh you need to be this way so when you're the opposite way you feel bad so now you're putting on this front like oh I'm doing this and you're operating but you know deep down like one you don't know what you're doing and then two you're not doing anything because you're not allowing yourself to say look this is where I am. Mm-hmm. This is who I am. I can't operate that way, but I can operate this way. And because I know I can operate, I, this is how I operate, I need to go about it this way. So like she said, if you're more the person who can like, look, I don't really like nobody talking to me. I read my books. I'm good. Then be okay with that. Don't feel like you ha- have to feel pressure to do that. But if you know the person, you know, like, look, I need more of that connection. I need someone to tell me. I need someone to be like, look, girl, did you read that book? Or tell me like, look, I ain't reading no book. Send me bullets and points be okay with that because if you can't be okay with that you will not change you will not grow you'll be sitting there getting depressed and having anxiety over some stuff that you didn't need to because excuses making freaking excuses and you know that was like a big thing for me even like we're dealing with my weight um i got to a point where i kept complaining a lot Mm -hmm. about where i was and then something said my little voice said well are you gonna do anything about it and and I said, well, no. And then myself said, well, then stop complaining. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you got to check yourself sometime, girls. You got to mm-hmm. check yourself. So 
being able to check yourself and to figure out what is holding you back and why is it holding you back? Is it because, you know, you come from a, a, a line, your family who have all been employees or they've been in jail or they've uh, abused or whatever, drugs, poverty, uh, poverty, mindset. poverty mindset, understanding that why and also being bold enough and brave enough to heal from that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's talking to your your uh, your mother or your father about how you felt growing up as a child. I mean, you may not get the outcome that you want, but you're doing it for yourself. You're able to release that, release something within yourself to empty you out to be able to get what you need to move forward in that. Mm -hmm. So really taking that action step. I think action step in your business, you know, having your plan, like mentorship and everything is good, but also having an action step with yourself when when it comes to your mental emotional capacity of it so if there is something that you feel that's holding you back and for example it can be like a reoccurring thought a reoccurring feeling that you feel or think every single day mm -hmm. addressing that because to me we we operate in our subconscious mind and i think again when we make that intention that we want to grow and, and change and thrive i think our um our minds can kind of bring to the surface something that we need to tackle right so i really believe in intuition and everything intuition and everything so trusting your intu intuition and see what that see once you address that thing that's on your mind and you make a plan on how you can um uh, come to it see how how that changes you mm -hmm. if does if there's if there's some kind of shift in your life does something else open up that that's dealing with your business like you might address that issue and then all of a sudden you get you look online or you get a phone call from somebody or whatever it may be that's going to help you further in your business business you get what i'm saying right and also with um seeking mentorship don't be afraid of therapy mm, girl <laughs> therapy Therapy. Because honestly, you have like you have to work on yourself before you can work on these other areas. And if you're not in a place where you can even accept that you deserve something better, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how many action steps you take, how many mentors you hire, you're not going to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. And especially in a black community, y'all, we cannot pray it off. And I, I'm a woman of faith. Thank you. And you know what? God told me to go to therapy. And my therapist honestly is like speaking to god all of our sessions mm -hmm. she's a woman of faith and i feel like when i talk to her i'm able to get through my feelings and i'm able to actually more so understand god's purpose for me when i speak with her mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to address those areas of your life that need healing and seek that mentorship in the form of therapy because you can't pray it all off mm -hmm. and black people y'all gonna stop with this yeah and this I foolishness think, i think especially in the black community there's so much hurt there's so much lack of support mm -hmm. and but then at the same time i hate the hysterical tip especially for black women I kind of hate, which I think keeps us from going to therapy. Is like I'm a strong, black woman. I'm a strong black independent woman. That keeps you at the same spot. Again, I love that about black women because we can be quite resilient and everything. Right. But at the same time, being strong doesn't always mean say I got this. Being strong is be, be able to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. to be able to accept your mistakes, to be able to say that they hurt me, she hurt me, he hurt me, I hurt and you me. You can't handle everything yourself. No. You might be able to get through something yourself, mm -hmm. but you can't get through it well. You can't help other people, mm -hmm. and you can't take on every single area of your business and your life as just one person. Mm -hmm. You're not an expert in every field, mm -hmm. so cut it out and seek the help that you need right it's been, and then i think it, especially if you are a mom too you like you handle it a lot on yeah. your own and everything and then it's kind of like oh i gotta if i can do this i can do that but being able to really take that those action steps find getting into therapy um i start i first started with meditation meditation was a really really did help me a lot i felt that's when i felt most connected with god because i mm -hmm. felt like I, I would just be able to get those intuitive downloads from from him and everything like that and then moving on to therapy was nice to have it more to be more one-on-one -on -one and everything and right. she she also has helped me with my confidence level as well so it's different areas and aspects of yourself that you have to work on alongside with working on your business right um and so lee and that leads into um doing different affirmations yeah, so once you realize your weaknesses in different areas where you're lacking, you have to change your mindset and really change the way that you envision yourself. 
One thing that I know I struggle with is actually public speaking. I have the worst anxiety and I don't know why. But you know what I'm doing right now? A podcast. I'm working on it. But I have to tell myself, my the thoughts in my head are going to tell me, oh, you can't speak, you're going to stutter, you're going to mess up, you, you talk too fast or whatever. And I have to slow myself down. And, no, you're a speaker. Your words are valuable. And I have to set those intentions before I even start speaking. And it's different areas of my life that I'll apply those different things to. But really, to, you have to change your thought process. And it's hard to do. It's, it's hard to undo these years of, of bad habits and seeing yourself in a certain way. Especially when you think other people see you in a certain way as well. You almost and, like feel like you want to live up to that. And it's like, girl, no, I'm not there. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you want to be the person that people think you are. And it's, yes. it's going to hold you back from growing into who you know you should yeah. be. Oh, girl. <laughs> And I can say that just from even when working with Susan, I I felt like Susan really looked at me being in a certain spot. And I I knew deep down, like, Susan, I'm, like, not there. But I, hold up, hold up, hold up. But I appreciated her seeing me in that way because it helped me have hold the light within myself. It gave me, like, a vantage point. It helped me, it helped me stay accountable. Um... Like I, I think I said in the last podcast, my father passed away a stage four pancreatic cancer um, in January of 2017. And unless you, if there's anybody out there who's lost a family member, you know how big of a event that, how big, a, big of an event that is in your life. So it really shook me. Now for me, I wish I really, I didn't do this, but I played it off as, as though it wasn't as big of a deal as it was. And I mainly did that, especially because my father passed away in January. Then my husband went on deployment, a seven, seven, seven month deployment in April. So after that, I was in Virginia by myself with me and my daughter. So I had no other choice but to trying push to be a through strong black woman trying to be a strong black woman and then i i i used also helping susan with better bodies and everything as a way for me i told myself and initially like i didn't want to have that pain and that hurt be destructive mm-hmm. i wanted to channel that energy something where it can grow into something to it could be beneficial to myself and a beautiful thing so when i got this opportunity to work with her I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But at the same time, I also used that to cover up my emotions. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I was, Susan would ask me to do stuff. I would do it by my half it at the same time. Honestly, because I couldn't, I still wasn't dealing with what I was. half functioning. I was half functioning, yeah. Because you, in order to deal with that pain, you have to cut off part of yourself. True. Mm -hmm. So she's kind of walking around like a zombie yeah you're doing things but you're not intentional you're just trying to get through them right and i that phase was it was it was hard Mm -hmm. because one i knew that she was hurt but i knew that she wasn't going to tell me about it no because she has this perception that she's the mama bear of the group Mm -hmm. and that she takes care of other people so no one can take care of her she can't Mm -hmm. be hurt she can't be vulnerable so, (laughs) Mm -hmm. so it was hard seeing that and i'm glad that you're finally out of that space and I wish more women would accept that, you know, it's it's okay to be hurt and it's okay yeah. to to accept help. Yeah. And I think that that's one thing I've definitely learned over the year too is to accept help. Yeah. Because I want things done when I want them done, the way I want them done. <laughs> um, people don't run on my schedule all the time. No, no, we don't. And so um, I would try to do a lot of things by myself and go through a lot of struggle where yeah. if I would have just waited and asked or I'm accepted so happy other that people. she said if i just would have waited because susan because i've I been trying to i, lo- I when I'm i have an idea i'm gonna let you go i'm an action person so as soon as something comes to me i'm gonna make it happen i don't i don't like sitting around waiting i get anxiety i'm sorry i think it's the anxiety let me blame that sorry kim trees but <laughs> i just want to get things done yeah and so and then and then inadvertently and then again this goes about accepting yourself so when susan says so she's very so much like action person then and now I'm more so like to like, all right, hold up. Let me she think likes this to through. assess the situation. And I'm like, trial and error. We're going to figure it we're out. Gonna figure, and I'm like, well, can we assess it first? Like, And so then for me, so instead of me accepting that, like, look, Susan, this is how I am. I'm like, all right, Susan, I'm all for you. Mm-hmm. But then I think it could have saved us both a lot of and do you frustration. Know how many times we'll get through something and she'll be like, well, I was going to tell you in the beginning, I think we should have done it this way, but I was just going to let you do your thing. And first you know, off, first people, off, people be letting me fail. First off, no, no. I be trying to tell Susan. I will tell her. And then she be like, nah, we going to do this. And I'm like, all right, cool. 
Because I know the type of person she is. She can be like, no, we're going to do this this way. That sounds like an excuse to me. I know better, you can do better. Okay, and if you know better, you can do better too, Susan. So now for going forward, I'm going to take that action step. And how about you slow down a little bit? I don't know about that. All right. We're going to try Anyways, well, I mean, I'll put that in my affirmations. Okay, yeah. So going back to the affirmations, um, so like she said, you know, even like for me, I was, um, uh, you know, I my business is a lending ear. Um, so I I wanted to create a safe space where women can come to one heal themselves, um, from any um sh- any self identity, self worth, who's really ready to like change their mindset as mm-hmm. far as. Um, how they look at their themselves mentally, emotionally, um, within relationship with the people closest around them, mm-hmm. with uh, relationship even more so with themselves. And I, um, I really want to even touch more on so like on, on meditation, how that can really help. And affirmations is really a big part of that. So yesterday, when me still trying to, um, you know, going about uh, figuring out how I wanted to have that all to flow, mm-hmm. I was in the shower and I had, I was getting all these different insightful thoughts. I'm like, oh, yo, that's great, that's great. But when I got out the shower, I'm like, I'm trying to write it down. I'm like, what was I thinking? And so at that moment, I was about to, I was, I was about to give up. I was about to get frustrated and say, you know, forget it. I was about to do my regular, I'm going to kind of wait and slow down, which is why I love the aspect of Susan of taking that action. And I said, no, stay here. So I started saying my affirmations. You remember. You know exactly what you said. Mm-hmm. And when I started, and I kept saying it until it came to me. I'm like, oh, that's it. And then I got it. Mm-hmm. So it's also to be able to stay um, within the fight, which leads us into being okay with failure. Uh, yes there's um this motivational video that i listen to every morning and i strongly believe that you need to be okay with failure fail early fail often and fail forward and so many people just remain stagnant off this fear of failure and if you learn any lesson from whatever situation then it's not failure right and right people get so caught up and again what people think about them if they started something and it didn't work or if they didn't follow through what would this person think And y'all, who cares? Because here's the thing. You can try to do the thing that you love and fail at it, but you can also fail at things that you don't love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, You can -hmm. can get fired from your job that you've had for 10 years as a senior executive, whoever, whatever, whatever, because it's not your company, it's not your business. So why waste the energy and waste the time and live that life of regret when you can just put yourself out there and just try. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that thing especially is kind of like, um, you know, if you fail at that, it's almost like, okay, well, I can go, I can go somewhere else. Uh, but you, like you say, you kind of use that as an excuse because it, you don't have all that pressure on yourself. Mm-hmm. People don't want to um, be accountable anymore. Mm-hmm. It's like if you're working in a business, if you don't have your own business, okay, whatever, you can find another job. But so it it takes that accountability away from people. You have to really stop. Like, it doesn't matter what people think. Like, if I fail today and Desiree laughs at me, like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Because who is she? Not that I don't love you, but honestly, like, why does it matter? If if, what someone thinks of you, how does that affect you and how does it affect your family? And instead of thinking about all the people who are waiting for you to fail, why don't you think about the people who are waiting for you to succeed? Change up the circle of friends. But how many people are you supposed to affect with your gift? God gave you a purpose and he gave you a gift for a reason. And there are people you're supposed to impact. So while you're sitting here twiddling your thumbs afraid of failure, all these people are waiting for you to step into your purpose. Right. So why not think about those people instead of thinking about what could happen and who's waiting for you to fail and the embarrassment of it? What happens if you don't try? And that's where you just touched on a good point. Also, you're not going to be for everybody. That was like my biggest mm. thing. I always want sure everybody not. to like me and all this stuff. I'm I'm very sociable, very bubbly. I have this thing of like I don't want anybody to be mad at me or whatever. And you gotta you gotta let that if you're that type of person, you have to let that go. Mm-hmm. Because who's for you is gonna be for you. Once you start putting out that product and you're super passionate behind it, you're gonna attract those people that's meant for you. Not meant not all you may not get a, a hundred million people, but you're gonna get the people exactly who are meant for you, mm-hmm. who is who are gonna help you have a successful business, who, who are gonna support you, who are who is gonna help you succeed. So again, changing your mindset around that really if you put your 
that whatever energy that you're putting into those negative thoughts, you can put that exact same energy into those and in creating that life and that business that you want. Mm -hmm. So being failing does it and I, I think people I just have they I think it almost you have to change the meaning behind failing in your mind or choose another word besides failing it's, all, it's the same thing I tell all the clients that come to there instead of focusing on everything that you're gonna lose because they come here they want to lose weight they want to lose inches all that stuff and when they don't see that number on the scale move they lose all hope but think about everything you will gain, all mm -hmm. the strength, all the confidence, all the energy. So the same thing with your with your business, instead of thinking about what could go wrong and what could fail, think about everything you'll gain when you do right. get to that spot. Exactly. And then if you're if you're and if you're struggling like, okay, well which one should I do? As Susan said, like if you Pick if you're one. if you're looking look about at what you feel you're going to gain from it, whether you you succeed or fail out of, fail out of it. If whatever you gain gaining from it, if it if it it doesn't add up into your vision of who you are so let's say for example um uh, uh when i wanted to be a, a when i was a, a pharmacy technician and i was deciding whether or not um i was going to put bria in, in preschool mm -hmm. it's like i would have gained knowledge if i would have stayed put her in pre um uh, i mean in daycare i would have been a pharmacy technician i would have gained knowledge as far as like being a, a a technician working in retail but that wasn't my vision Right. So it didn't align with that, but mm -hmm. being at home with my daughter, it aligned with what I wanted to do. It had it would, if I wanted to be a uh, start a business, it didn't make sense to still have her in pre, uh, pre uh, daycare if I mm -hmm. still wanted to be at home with her. You know what I'm saying? So being able to make sure it's aligning with um, what you're trying to achieve, uh, win, uh, win or fail. And then when you do fail, because it's inevitable, mm -hmm. as you take those steps and as you try different things, something is not going to go right. Yep. Understand that you're going to experience resistance along the way. Yep. And you have to persevere and you have to be resilient. Yes. And every time you try to level up, something Girl. else is going to happen. Girl. Else. And in the beginning of the beginning stages of this man, it we wasn't were, as I feel like it wasn't as I feel like now it's bad. Well, no, I no. In the beginning, it was bad because we didn't. One, we didn't recognize the the ebbs and the flows of sales with the different seasons and things. Mm -hmm. So when we would go through periods of of struggle, or we, like, we wouldn't get as many clients, we'd get a, a bad batch of clients, bad leads. Yeah, I would be laying on the floor in the office about to I lose try, my mind. I'd be trying to tell you about that, but I ain't gonna and, but understanding that there's going to be these periods, and that you just have to change up what you're doing. And people, when they experience that first wave of failure. It makes them stagnate again. They're like, well, what do I do now? And you have to try something else. When, that, when one thing is going wrong, you have to keep moving. The answer to everything is massive action. And whether that step you take next is going to be the next step is going to be the right step, you don't know, but you have to keep moving. And you have to keep trying something else. Staying still is never going to be the right answer. Right. You're never going to improve yourself by taking these baby steps here and there. If you want big changes, you mm -hmm. have to take massive action. I, I, I was... And you, you definitely have to take massive action. And I would say if you're a person who's a, intimidated by massive action at all, um, I definitely do think you, 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 no matter what, I feel like any step, any step that you take, whether it's super big or small, that's different from what you originally were doing. That's what I is, mean by is, massive, something that's, mm -hmm. is different from what you're currently right. doing. Right. So it, it may not, you know, it may, in your eyes, even if it's, I can, even if it's something small, just the fact that you're making that change, it shows that you still want it. Right. It shows that you still, you're, you're persevering. You're not saying, oh my gosh, this doesn't work. So since this doesn't work, that means it's not meant to be, I'm just going to stop right now. No, right. you don't want to do that. You can't keep trying the same thing over and over again. No. Don't beat a dead horse. No. If that Facebook ad didn't work now, it's not going to work next month. You need to change it. Yep. And then whatever, and tr try that out. I think I think more so if, if, if the word failure so for me, sometimes it's somewhat. You also have. I have like certain trigger words to a certain extent, or trigger moments. Mm -hmm. You again about accepting and knowing yourself. If you know there's something that triggers you, maybe not say failure. You know, I'm afraid to fail. Just call it trial, trial and, and error. error. When I say trial and error, I'm in a trial and error phase. That makes me feel better than saying failure because it makes me feel like oh, I can I can try again. 
Mm-hmm. So if you if knowing that again with your mindset, knowing that and see how you you pretty much have to trick your mind and everything, but mm-hmm. definitely making those steps to try something different and being don't be afraid of it. Sometimes we make a sometimes we can be, sometimes it really is a little thing that we have to do, but we make it into this big mm-hmm. gigantic thing, and that makes you builds up the fear, mm-hmm. you know, and then it makes you not Unless want you to take that your step. Excuses and to just stay where you are. Yeah. Instead of just taking that step, going yep. out on faith and trying something I'm, different. Yep, because this podcast is something different. And it's so funny. And again, this is what I mean about intention and everything. Um, before uh, Susan said that she wanted to do a podcast, I had already, I asked my mom for a podcast uh, uh, set for Christmas and everything. And I knew I wanted to be, um, I knew that I wanted to do uh, a podcast. And so again, when you start to set those intentions in your mind and your heart of what it is that you want, and you know, I stated before how the world starts starts to open up to you mm-hmm. i'm like i said you know we were you know i'm like we was talking you know i'm more so like okay i need to see the process i'm a little bit more critical susan's the action so i'm the world opened up again a, another opportunity for me to have this space so you have to set that attention mm-hmm. you have to claim it you have to accept it you have to be okay with it you have to um heal yourself whether that's through therapy meditation affirmation mm-hmm. seeking different mentor mentorships books podcasts once you are doing that the universe god will honor that my mother always told me mm-hmm. god will not God will not bless what is not moving. So mm-hmm. every time I'm doing something, even if I'm not sure about it, I remember exactly what it is that I want. And I said, God, this is what I'm able to do. Please help me the rest of the way. Please open up this door for me. Please open up a door within myself to make these changes. And once you do that, I promise you, you will start to see some beautiful things. You will start to see the miracles of life. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say there won't be resistance and there won't be ups and downs, but mm-hmm. the positive will always outweigh Way the bad. The- Yep. And yeah. you think about you stay holding to that when you again with the being persevering and resilient, you take you remember your why mm-hmm. and you make that be your light throughout that darkness because it really does help. And stuff always comes on time some kind of way. Yeah. All right. So just do a little recap. Our five points today with steps to develop a business or a growth mindset in business. First was accepting your situation, knowing who you are, understanding your strengths and your weaknesses, and then from there developing that growth mindset, how to fix yourself, how to to set those intentions, and how to become the person that will get you to your goal. Mm -hmm. From there, um, affirmations. So creating the the image of yourself that you want, that you want others to perceive of you and that you want to perceive of yourself. Daily affirmations, writing down things. So actually saying, I am bold, I am beautiful, I am strong, I am a leader, I am a good speaker. Whatever it is for you that you want to become, speaking that into existence. Yes, create your reality. Mm -hmm. Right. Not being afraid of failure. Take that step out. Try something new. Put that foot out there and just don't be afraid of it. And when you do experience failure, because it is inevitable, being strong, being resilient, persevering through that. Mm-hmm. And another thing I want to touch on when you said, um, you know, uh, being that presenting yourself to the world or uh, of how you want people to perceive you or where you want to be, you know, uh, when, when that happens, when you're saying those affirmations sometimes, it's kind of like not only will you get resilience like from things on the outside of you kind of like crashing around, you'll start to get that resilience within yourself. Oh, yeah. And when you're saying these affirmations from time to time, you're thinking like, okay, I'm going to say this affirmation and poof, I'm going to be that person. It don't work mm-hmm. like that. Practice you, makes you have perfect. To combat your own negative. Thoughts. You have to because sometimes gonna write it down and, and that's your head is gonna be like right. Nah, but girl. you know what though? That's gonna be our next uh, another podcast about combating um, uh, negative thoughts when you're mm-hmm. trying to make these changes because when you're saying these affirmations, you know. At first, it almost feels like a lie, right. but you have to keep saying it to yourself. What I do sometimes, I'll look in the mirror. I'll look in the mirror and I'll stare directly in my eyes and I'll say that. So know that you will come up with that resistance and just as much as you keep pursuing in your business when something didn't work out and you try again, it'll be that same way when you're doing these affirmations, when you're trying to internally change your world. Guys, that concludes this episode. Yes. Um, next time, we're going to talk about developing a growth mindset in health. So, if you already fell off the wagon from your New Year's resolution, y'all better join us next time. Yep. Again, if you have any questions about how to expand in um, business, life, or health, you can go ahead and send us an email at sbc at suzysavage.com, Suzy with a Z, or you can send us messages on Instagram at strong underscore by choice. Mm-hmm. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this podcast if you've been impacted by it at all, okay? Share it with the world.